I think I've officially figured it out. How to successfully grow peppers in Canada, regardless of what you're growing, whether it's super hot, medium hot, bingos all the way to bells. I've cracked the code. And the way I cracked that code is by trying several different ways to actually grow peppers. And here today, I'm gonna show you the absolute worst way to do it and fail. And the absolute best way to actually grow peppers in your yard. So, Let's first start off with why I'm growing in containers and not growing in the ground. Okay, so I started growing in containers years ago. When my grandma initially was failing with peppers, I thought to myself, you know what? They're tropical plants, they like hot heat. I should probably grow them in containers. So I began doing that and right away I was off to the races. Now I thought I was genius in the fact that I thought of growing it in containers. Turns out, Everyone new to grow them in containers, not only those of us in Canada, Kanata, it's also those in the US. My friend Bobby and Chilipino, they both, because they're pepper pros, they said that they also grow in containers. Now, the theory, the reason for why I think pepper growing in containers is so successful over in ground is because, one, they're mobile meaning I can move them indoors when my temperatures dip below 10 degrees Celsius. Secondly, I can move them into more sun or less sun, depending on what signs and symptoms they're giving me. Thirdly, the actual roots themselves stay warm, which is hugely beneficial in a plant that need to be kept warm. The other one is actually the ability to control the space and the amount of water it gets. So in a short growing season, such as what we have here, stressing a plant out can cause sexual reproduction. And the sexual reproduction is essentially just the fruiting flowering cycle. When the plant believes it's time to make babies because their life is nearly over, such as myself, which should be put out to pasture here pretty quick and needs to make a baby. I wish I was joking but I'm not. Let's get back to plants and their rumpus room activities. They will flower. And so when you restrict water and you let the roots bottom out, you end up with fruiting and flowering. That happens a lot faster. Jalapenos. So they are from the same package. They were started at the same time. They were kept in the same greenhouse and they were transplanted, bumped up into the exact same size nursery pots. The only difference was the containers they ended up in outdoors and the treatment that they received once they were in said containers. So what that means is they are all identical and they all have a little bit of spice because they're jalapenos. And speaking of spice, today's sponsor, Birch Mattresses. Now Birch Mattresses is a natural mattress company. They use organic cotton, organic wool, and 100% natural latex to make their beds out of. When I was reading up on birch mattresses and just mattresses in general, I found that mattresses have fiberglass in them, which is crazy. And so I actually looked up to see if my mattress has fiberglass in it. Turns out it does. Yeah, not ideal. So I put birch mattress up about a month-ish ago. And let me tell you, I wake up in the mornings and I don't have lungs filled with mucus, which I'm pretty sure was either the fact that my old mattress has seen a lot of miles, a lot of miles, and or the fact that it had fiberglass in it. So the other thing I noticed with my birch mattress that you will notice whenever you switch to organic anything or just natural fiber or anything, it is much cooler or it's better at regulating heat. I sweat in bed for multiple different reasons. And the birch mattress actually keeps me relatively cool the entire time. So because of that, I am getting much better sleeps despite the fact that it can be like 35 degrees Celsius sometimes here. Needless to say, I love my birch mattress and I think you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch Living. Their Labor Day sale is live now. So this is the perfect time to upgrade your sleep with 25% off a birch mattress. You also get two free eco rest pillows if you visit birchliving.com slash gardening in Canada. You can receive all this by visiting the link that I have pinned in the comment down below to find out more about this limited time offer. Go check out birch mattresses. Thank you birch mattresses for sponsoring today's video and while mattresses do bring spice to your life let's get back to the main spice of life which is jalapenos. So let's Let's start off with the one that yielded, but not fantastically. And yes, I should have staked these, but in the name of science, I staked none of them. I'm just gonna play it off that I did that on purpose, but in reality, it's just because I'm very lazy. Now what this is, it's a 
This is a self-watering container. And in it, I do have, it's literally just a five gallon pail bucket and it has like this kit. I'll link the kit below if I can find the link to it. It very likely will not be an affiliate link. What is different about this one compared to the other one is that I mixed in a granular synthetic fertilizer using this video here on reusing potting soil. And I placed it in a space that was getting six to eight hours of full sun. And then I was moving it when and if it showed signs of sun stress. So this plant in its entirety has full-sized jalapenos already, and I very well could harvest them or leave them if I chose to. I will say the reason why I'm saying it's subpar is because it is not flowering nearly as much as some of the other ones are. And the reason it's not flowering, I do believe, comes down to the stress of too much water in in the root ball. So inside of the rhizosphere, we have obviously a self-watering condition and the self-watering condition does have sunshine mix number four, which is a very coarse mix. It is similar to the Pro Mix HP and it's just really large perlite. The unfortunate part is that this does and will compact throughout the summer as time goes on because hashtag gravity. That has resulted in less airspace, which has resulted in stress on the roots, which I do believe has caused the eventual downfall of this plant and just overall lower flowering, 16-ish jalapenos. And that's if I don't try to overwinter it because you can't overwinter peppers in particular if you have them in containers like this. And if you want to know how to overwinter, this video right here works wonderfully. A bunch of people in the Geek Crew have tried it and done it and posted on the Facebook group and A++, it does work pretty well. Okay, so this plant, it is in a not self-watering container. It is in a ratchet recycled plastic. It is around, I think, probably seven gallons. And it has around it this black pot. Now, if you watch my video on the black disc, which is this, that I placed around my tomato plants and how it increased yield, this I do truly think has resulted in an increase also in my pepper yields. So obviously this is slightly more inconvenient in the sense that I do have to water it more often and I can't just set it and forget it. I did go on vacation this summer for about a week and when I did that I had to use this vacation way of watering. It did keep it happy and healthy and well on its way to success. This plant is still flowering and I do truly believe it's going to flower until I make it stop. So I'm going to probably move it into my greenhouse because I want to see how far I can push the limit. The benefit here isn't the container size because the container size is like maybe a gallon or two more than the five gallon pale bucket. I think it comes down to the color, the black on black. Isn't that like a song? I was today years old when I realized the ACDC song was back in black, not black on black. Do you know how long it took for me to find that clip just to realize it was never black? Anyways, um, has resulted in some pretty good yields. Definitely second place. The worst one. By, by far the worst one. Yeah, so this is no longer flattering. The jalapenos that are on here are very tiny and red, already turning red. So if you did not know jalapenos, if you leave them on your plant, they turn red eventually. They also have stretch marks. So that kind of woody stretch mark has to do with watering. I have them in a self-watering container, so does that shock me? No. Does it suck? Yes, it's from too rapid of an expansion on the fruit itself. So. Not ideal. What is different is I did not move it out of full sun. So I left this bugger in full sun, regardless of what memo it was trying to send me, my soulless ginger behind decided to just ignore it entirely. So because of that, I have a very stressed out, droopy plant. If you're looking for signs and symptoms of a plant that is heavily stressed out by sun, uh, that is a pepper but just don't put them in full sun. Make sure you listen to your plants when they scream for help. Another finding shakes up previously held notions that the plant kingdom was mostly silent. Okay, so this one hands down is the best one. Yes, yeah, so it is much larger, not only in container size, but also in the plant itself. The difference, it's about 10 gallons, so double the size. It is not self-watering, it's just regular. It's still in the same mix 
of soil. Now this is where it gets shocking. This plant was in the same sunlight experience as the one that was torn to absolute bits. The larger size container, combined with the fact that it's not black, I think is what saved this plant from the heat stress that the other one did receive. And because of that, I have a much larger plant that is still flowering, still fruiting. The downfall to this, however, is that while it's still fruiting, while it's still flowering, the plant itself hasn't yielded big jalapenos yet. Everything is still in the works, if you will. So I'm not gonna have edible jalapenos on this till much later in the season. However, I expect probably double the amount of jalapenos on this plant compared to any of my other ones. If you have a short growing season with the inability to actually move this to a space that is going to make it happy and healthy when the nighttime temps begin to sink, you're probably gonna wanna actually go with the black on black version because at least you're gonna get jalapenos off of it. If you wanna learn more about overwintering these in a climate that is cold and not fun during the winter season, then check out this video here. Google says to watch this and check out Birch, the link down below. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.